Mido, hi there, Japan fans. Today's show, we're going to talk about discipline. Rezen O, Master Shimasho. This is the eighth year of the Presentation Japan series podcast, and we are beaming around the world to you from sunny Minato Ku in Tokyo. I'm your host, Dr. Greg Story, Dale Kani Tokyo franchise owner, the president of Dale Kani Tokyo Training, and the three time best selling author of Japan Sales Mastery, which is Zaegyo in Japanese, Japan Business Mastery, and Japan Presentations Mastery in Japanese, and at the more present no tachijin. My other books include Stop Wasting Money on Training, which in Japanese is Training de Okani o Mudni Sunu wa Yamimasho. And my just released new book is Japan Leadership Mastery, and all are available on Amazon. Through this podcast, I want to help you become a better speaker to be one, clear, two, confident, three, persuasive, four, highly influential with those around you. Don't forget to subscribe and share this podcast with your family, friends, and colleagues. We are not being sponsored by Libsyn, but we value your privacy, which is why we have our podcast hosted by Libsyn. Unlike many other hosting organizations, Libsyn have a strict policy that does not allow access to your private information by anyone. Here is our daily podcast lineup on Apple Podcasts. Mondays, the cutting edge. Japan Business Show podcast, Tuesday, the Presentations Japan series, and every second Tuesday, the Business Tachijin no Oshie show, Wednesdays, the Sales Japan series, Thursdays, the Leadership Japan series, and every second Thursday, the Business Pro podcast show, Fridays, the Japan Business Master Show podcast, and Saturdays, Japan's top business interviews. Now, this is episode number 392, 392. And today we're talking about presenters need strong discipline in Japan. Our presenter was vivacious, sparky, bright, and engaging. She works in a cool area of business, has the opportunity to see what works and doesn't work in many industries. This enables her to pull together terrific insights and back these up with hard evidence based on numerous case studies. And who doesn't love a good case study? A big crowd turned out to hear her talk. So the place was packed. Chatting before we started, she mentioned in passing that she had not planned the talk and was going to wing it. I thought that was brave, but in a bad way. The talk has been advertised for weeks. She knows when it is on, so why would she want to wing it? I just dismiss this as either bravado or laying out an early excuse in case it bombs as a presentation. Either way, I didn't believe it. Sure enough, when she went through the slide deck, it was obviously structured and well planned. She was speaking to what was on screen, so Definitely no script required, but it had a plan. Early in, she said something disturbing. She mentioned that she intended for this to be an interactive talk. This sounds pretty sexy, getting the audience involved, and it can be. But I got worried immediately. Her invitation to contribute, to participate, flags the issue of time control. Whenever we invite the audience to chip in with their thoughts and experiences, we lose the ability to keep on time. Some responses are short, but many are surprisingly long. I'm always amazed by how much pent-up demand there is out there for people to add their two bobs worth. Maybe these days, with everyone so engrossed with their individual phone screens, the opportunity for some people to speak up has shriveled, and they are desperate for their thoughts, musings, and comments to be heard by others. When you make that interactive invitation, there will be a proportion of people who will take you up on your offer and more. 
the more bit is where we lose control. That impacts the overall discipline of the talk to conform to the schedule for start and finish. There's nothing wrong with involving the audience, but it requires discipline on our part to control proceedings such that we finish on time. When we combine this interactivity at scale, we can blow out the time required to get through the prepared material. This happened to me recently when teaching a class on presentations for a luxury brand. In typical Dale Cunney fashion, we plan our classes out to the second. People in the class, however, were much more talkative than I expected, and I found a dilemma of more material to cover than the time allocated. I had to drop some parts out because we had a hard stop. Find out more. We come back from the break. Our show today is brought to you by our public courses, but we also do custom in-house programs. We do them in Japanese, we do them in English, we do them in our super safe classroom, and we do them live online. Our show today is being brought to you by, on the 24th of August, we're doing the 12-week version of our Dale Cunny course. On the 12th and 13th of September, we're doing our high-impact presentations class and also another Dale Cunny 12-week course. Our website is www.dale-carnegie.co.jp. Email me at greg.story at dalecarnegie.com. If you like learning by watching videos, then we have over 2,300 there for you at Tokyo Japan Dale Kani TV on YouTube. We release three shows every week on YouTube. The Cutting Edge Japan Business Show, that's the premier business show in Japan, every Monday Tokyo time. Fridays we have the Japan Business Mastery Show, and on Sundays we release Japan's top business interviews, where I interview leaders from SMEs right up to the corporate captains of industry on one topic, leading in Japan. Now, every second Thursday, we release the Business Put All television show. Don't forget to grab my business best-selling books on Japan on Amazon, Japan Sales Mastery, which is Saegyo in Japanese, Japan Business Mastery, and Japan Presentations Mastery, or in Japanese, Anata mo Prezen no Tachijin. My other books include Stop Wasting Money on Training, which in Japanese is Training de Okani o Mudi Suno wa Yami Mashou. And my just-released new book is Japan Leadership Mastery. And all are available on Amazon. Welcome back. The secret in this case is to skip those parts, but in a way which is not obvious to the audience. Only you know what is in the slide deck, and so you can make adjustments if you need to. I just jumped some later slides in a way which was not public to the participants. As far as they're concerned, this is all part of the plan. Our speaker ran out of time and made the amateur error of showing us all what we had missed, what we missed out on because she was not able to control the proceedings. This is really bad. Now, the audience feels unhappy because they were enjoying the first part of the presentation and they want to receive all the value they're trading their time for. Seeing sexy slides whiz by with no commentary or explanation is really a tease, but not one we can enjoy. My calculation was she needed about another 30 minutes to cover what she'd prepared. If she'd be more disciplined, she could have allowed some degree of interaction, but capped it so it didn't blow up the presentation time schedule. She got caught by the organizers, giving her the bums rush to get off stage because the time was more than up. Reflecting on the structure, she'd spent a fair amount of time at the start establishing her credentials through trips down memory lane with her career. It was relevant to what she was presenting about, and it was incredibly charming. But I think it went a bit too long. Consequently, at the end, she had to sacrifice the juicy bits about the case studies. She could have let her evidence do the hard lifting to establish her credibility on the subject because she certainly had the goods. 
this is another discipline point. Don't get caught up talking too much about yourself. As fascinating as that is to you. Her takeaway points were a letdown at the very end as she wrapped it up. She had the right idea, but the content was a bit ho-hum. She could have come up with some hard-hitting recommendations at the end to really provide benefit to the audience. No one was photographing the takeaways, and that is always a bad sign with any sort of summary. The final impression was her rushing through the content, teasing us with sexy bits we didn't cover, and then leaving us high and dry with humdrum guides to our next steps. The lack of discipline meant the presentation started well and just slowly imploded and collapsed at the end. She was still vivacious and charming, so that always helps. Better, though, to be more professional and bring value to the audience. That is what we want them to remember us for. Did you get value from today's show? If you did, then share the love around with your family, friends, and colleagues. Don't forget to subscribe and share this podcast. Until the next episode, go out there and apply the learnings from today and become a presentations legend amongst your circle. Thank you for joining me and please tune in next week. Remember, I'm in your corner, your go-to guy for soft skills training in Tokyo, committed to your success here in Nippon. <laughs>